thank you for viewing this video in which I will be unboxing and giving my first impressions of the new box set from Games Workshop, Forgebane. My name is Steve, this is the SDFNet 40k channel, and let us begin. Now announced and released in March 2018, this box really seems to come from nowhere. It's not a full starter uh, box to replace the Dark Imperium, as it does not uh, contain a copy of a full rulebook. Rather, it's a battle box containing two factions and a short campaign. This box differs from most Games Workshop sets, as it does not actually contain Space Marines, which are the standard protagonists for most of this type of box game. This box, as you might have likely have deduced from uh, the box art, contains Necros, Necros, Necrons and Adeptus Mechanicus. I personally think this is a really interesting pairing, and I'm a fan of both factions. The last one of these boxes I recall, or certainly the last one that I bought, was the Death Mask box that contained Death Watch and Harlequins. In terms of the box contents, there is a new model for each faction, together with some pre-existing kits. On the Adeptus Mechanicus side, we have a Tech Priest Dominus, 10 Skatari Rangers, or Vanguard, and two of the new Imperial Knight Armiger Warglaive models. Facing them down, there is a new cryptic with a canoptic cloak, five immortals, or death marks, five lich guard, that could also be built as triarch praetorians, and three canoptic wraiths. What's nice about this kit is you get the full retail kits for everything, with the exception of the knight armagers, at which at the time of writing there isn't a solo retail kit. But when it is available I strongly suspect there will actually be an additional sprue uh, in order to build two other variants. <clears throat> anyway, I digress. As a result of uh, you getting uh, the full kits, you can build the models however you choose. If you already own Skatari Rangers, you can build them as Vanguard, or if you already have Lich Guard, you can build them as Praetorians, and so on. Uh, the campaign uh, perhaps will detail that you need to build the models in the suggested way, but you, know, you could uh, always proxy the models in or substitute in other pre-existing models if you have them. From either of the two forces you will be able to build a patrol detachment, uh, giving you a good base from which to build an army. The Admate forces, you will start with a patrol and a super heavy auxiliary detachment, as the new Knight Armager Warglaives are actually super heavy units. However, you do have the option to take them in squads of one to three per detachment slot. As for how these two forces stack up against each other, well, time will tell. I haven't actually obviously played the two against each other yet. Uh, my feeling is that the Imperial forces will have the firepower advantage, but I will probably circle back to this later in the review. For now, let's get to the interesting part and see what's in the box. Now, before I get stuck in, I'd like to take a moment to really appreciate the box art on the lid. I feel this is a wonderful depiction of the, the two forces facing off against each other, and manages to include a representation of all of the box contents, with perhaps a uh, greater percentage being given over to the Admech side. I think it would have been nice if the Necrods were being given some greater impact, or perhaps the, the, uh, the tone of the artwork shift from the brighter side of the Imperial over to a dark, more sinister colour palette, but it's a nice picture all the same. Obviously, custom artwork is always a good thing, and with Games Workshop recycling a lot of the art assets from 7th or 8th edition codexes, it's nice to have something unique here. So, uh, flipping the box over, we have a photo of all the box contents, uh, painted uh, fantastic painting on all the models as we come to expect from Games Workshop. Uh, up in the top left here uh, we have the setting for the scenario which I will just read. Uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus built their empire on resource... Re uh, I'll start that again shall I? The Adeptus Mechanicus built their planets on resource rich planets. Worlds which the rising Necron dynasties now want back. Across the Imperium the worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus are under attack an ancient Xenos empire rising from beneath their feet, forced into awakening by, an by the anarchy of a galaxy at war. The cold and metallic Necrons, roused from their eons long slumber, intend to restore order and obedience to the worlds through extermination. Even 
the episode, even should it mean the slaughter of every Adeptus Mechanicus and Imperial Knight usurper that have trespassed upon this sovereign domain. We then have a list of the box contents, but I'll cover that as we go through the box itself. So, on to the good parts. Sorry for knocking the camera there. Breaking through the cellophane itself. Point of no return if I mess up the recording here. Get that out of the way. So, popping off the lid, and we have a whole lot of plastic. Uh, there are, there really are a lot of sprues in this kit. Um, many of the sprues are, are the old existing ones, so I won't spend very much time on those. But I'll instead focus my attention on the new kits, uh, as I believe that will probably be of more interest to a lot more people. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go through all the sprues, put them in two piles, and then uh, I will cycle back and we can look at them in a more logical order. But we have the new knight model and his weapons here. And obviously there's two of those in the kit, so we'll just put that over to one side at the moment. This is probably really noisy on the microphone, I apologise for that. We have the new Cryptic model, uh, the Mechanicus HQ, we have three sprues of Canopsic Wraiths, have That's one Skatari. I think there should be another Skatari in there, but we've got some Lich Guard and some more Lich Guard Sprues. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the rest of the Skatari and the uh, Necron or Immortal Sprues. Ah, uh, the, the Immortal or Deathmark Sprue is what I meant to say. Now, underneath that uh, reasonably impressive uh, pile of plastic, we have this. Uh, ooh, one of the uh, thingy, Necron thingies, <laughs> come off. Yes, it's called a Necron thingy, if in case anyone corrects me on it. Uh, so underneath uh, the pile of plastic, we have this uh, protective divider uh, to protect the paperwork. Uh, I don't recall exactly when Games Workshop first started doing these, uh, but it's a, it's a comparatively new practice, and I think it's great. I remember back in 6th and 7th edition, in fact, my, both my copies of the Dark Imperium box sets uh, had uh, damage to the rule books due to the kind of spike, spiky sprues pointing through and poking like dents into the covers of the books. I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, but it was a shame for the books to arrive uh, new and damaged. Uh, these dividers are there to prevent that, and if you're lucky enough to have a divider that's not been damaged, as appears to be the case with mine, uh, it uh, becomes a really nice poster to go on your wall. So uh, that's, uh, that's a win. I'll just put that to one side. Um, hidden away at the bottom of the box we have the paperwork which contains the build instructions. Let's just uh, pop them open. side. We have the standard kind of pamphlets build instructions where they bring all the uh, individual build instructions into one uh, book. Uh, as you can see you do get the build instructions on how to build all of the options of each of the kids. So uh, that's good stuff. And then we have the, the knight kits which look easy enough. Put that to one side. We have a this fold-out copy of the core rules. Uh, you got one of these in the Dark Imperium box. I, I think they're a really handy uh, resource just to kind of have, you may not always want to lug around the full rule book, but it's really useful to have uh, just a quick reference guide for any rules that you may kind of get stuck on in it uh, during a game. And then you have the Forge Bane campaign book, which is a full colour one. 
we have a really nice picture there. We have some information on the setting, the map, about the different uh, combatants. And then we have the actual kind of campaign. Sorry, it's that centre there. Apologise. Have the different missions for the campaign. I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on these because I don't know where uh, Games Workshop like legal team for me kind of wholesale showing the things off uh, sit. But you know, <laughs> just in case I don't want to get flagged. Uh, we have how to build your army. We've got some. Uh, Warlord, uh, sorry, Canticles of the Omnissiah there. Uh, the data slates. Ah, so that's interesting. They do actually only give you the data slates for the Rangers. So whilst you can build the uh, Skatari Vanguard from the kits, you only get the data slate for Rangers. So uh, with what I said earlier, they were pushing to kind of build a, a set, definite kind of build from this set. The Armaga Warglaves, I'll come back to their stats later. Um, Cryptic Immortals, again, you only get the data slates for, uh, for for the recommended units. It is nice that you get the points there as well, uh, and they don't force you into uh, playing power level. Don't necessarily have anything against power level, but it's nice to have the option to play points should you choose. Get some uh, transfers here. Bases, standard bases, you've probably seen those before. These are the bases for the uh, Armaga Warglaives. I think that's the same size. I think that's a hundred mil. I'm saying that very tentatively. But um, the same size, I believe the new Redempt's Dreadnought is on that base. Uh, certainly smaller than a uh, many other things, but no, good size base. The base for the uh, Transonic Arquebus for the uh, Rangers and the two HQ bases there. And then we get some more transfers. I can pretty much guarantee you because anyone we got. Two of the Armaga Warglaive ones, and another one. I know those, those are Adeptus Mechanicus. My apologies. Yeah, um, anyone who follows my stuff will probably know that I'm very likely not going to use those transfers. So, I'll cut it off there and I'll be back in just a second. Let's start our look at the new models with the Necron Cryptic. As you can see, the model comes on two sprues and it's been chopped up digitally. We've got uh, half of the body here and half the body there. Uh, Games Workshop have been pretty good these days at kind of chopping up their models to try and hide the seam lines wherever possible. Uh, I would say looking at the sprues that the model seems to be fairly monopose uh, and they don't look like there's many options for alternate parts or for war gear or other personalizations but uh, you know, this is kind of in keeping with the current design philosophy we see from our benevolent overlords in Nottingham. Uh, the model is in a dynamic pose, but uh, we know from the photos is also attached in an extremely delicate and as such breakable way to the base. Uh, the newer the model, uh, the harder it appears to store. It seems to be the general uh, direction it's going in. Uh, this model isn't quite as bad as, say, St Celestine or as she's otherwise known, I dare you to break it scale, but it's definitely a model that may require some extra care. In terms of the rules for the Cryptic, let's... Uh, can we zoom in on that at all? Let's, there we go, I'll just try and hold that still. So, uh, we can see... Uh, it's... It, Fairly standard cryptic rules, um, but his unique piece of war gear, the Canoptic Cloak here, uh, grants him a move characteristic of 10 inches, which is great because that means the model will be like zipping around the field. 
uh, buffing other Necron units as required. But it also gives them the fly keyword, which is great, as I believe that is the single most powerful uh, keyword in the game. The units, this unit really is a kind of a support character rather than an offensive one, uh, so really doesn't want to get bogged down in combat. And the ability to fall back from combat because of fly and still shoot, combined with a higher movement, uh, it will keep the model on the board for longer, so that's a great thing. Um, finally, uh, we see under the Canoptic Cloak that uh, any Necron units within three inches that have the Living Metal rule, which will be a good portion, if not all, of the armour. I don't want to commit to the saying it's all without the new Codex in hand, but uh, they will regain the three uh, Lost Wounds from the Living Metal rule, rather than the, the base one. I'm tempted to say you will probably only want to take uh, Cryptex with this upgrade uh, for your list. The Canopsic Cloak it just seems to make them uh, better. I, I don't know what the points cost is of one of, of uh, Canopsic Cloak, but uh, it, it, I, for the functionality it provides, I think it's probably well worth uh, the well worth the cost. So, in summary, this is a, a great new kit. Let's just move the book back out of the way. This is a great new kit. Um, I have uh, two or maybe three uh, of the uh, old foot uh, cryptex, and they're fail cast, and every single one of them came with broken staves or some other moulding defects, which was disappointing. Um, kind of general response was, you know, fix it with green stuff, but when uh, large like sections of the blade here are missing on it, then uh, it's not really a, a green stuff fix or not within my uh, ability. Um, it's great that this new kit's in plastic, uh, and, you know, the sooner Games Workshop, they're, they're working their way through, but the sooner Games Workshop move away from Failcast, the better. Um, I, if I see a model is only available in Failcast, I, I will actually look for an alternate model and or, or not buy that model because I resent paying premium Games Workshop prices for a definitely substandard product. Anyway. This review is not me ranting about uh, Games Workshop's historical failings. This is about new stuff, and new stuff is good. Games Workshop plastics are an absolute pleasure to work with, and they really are the market leaders in terms of quality and detail. So, good thing about the new Cryptic. Looking forward to building that and getting it painted up. Okay, so now onto the main draw of this box for many people, myself included. Uh, will be the new Imperial Knight Armager Warblade. So let's uh, put that all down there. First off, uh, you get two, which is a nice touch. Uh, the knights are spread across one and a bit sprues. I, I believe uh, when this unit hits retail, it will be two full sprues. Uh, I, I've seen other community commenters point out the instructions contain uh, additional head options that aren't in included on the sprues, and at Adepticon, uh, Games Workshop themselves confirmed there would be uh, a melee and a shooty variant of, the, of these knights, in addition to uh, what I believe this to be the kind of the jack-of-all-trades option. Uh, on the first sprue, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit there. We have uh, the weapons for the knights. We can see uh, Baby's first chainsword here, uh, which is really cute. I I, I, don't know. I personally think uh, they should have gone for something more unique rather than like just a stunted version of the main knight weapon, or just given them a, a full length chainsword, but just uh, scaled down to the frame of this new knight. Uh, my point being really, I'm just not the biggest fan of this stubby thing. Uh, also on the sprue we have the Melter Cannon thingy, um, which I forget the name of, but uh, uh, for the purpose of this part of the review will be referred to as the Melter Cannon thing. It does have a name, but we'll come back, back to it later. 
And finally we have a few uh, armour plates here uh, for the builds, something I think I would definitely be checking as to whether or not we can build the knight without these attached, um, as I think it will be it would be a lot easier to assemble these uh, to, to paint these uh, as sub assemblies, as I have done when I built my main uh, my full imperial knight. The other knight sprue contains all the core components spread across these three panels, uh, three sprue panels. Uh, you can clearly see the legs, the carapace, the, the sides of the kind of main body parts. Uh, if you've ever built an Imperial Knight, you may get a feeling of familiarity looking at many of these components. I can envisage already how you go about putting this together, but of course it's best to follow instructions. Uh, but I, I think looking at this, you probably will be able to do the sub-assemblies that I mentioned before. Uh, and actually on mine, you have some uh, uh, thin strands of plastic where it's been injection moulded. So hey, that's nice. Now, in terms of the all-important rules, let's uh, get that there. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to stop the camera. And let's zoom in a bit. So um, they uh, they have a profile that I'd more associate with a dreadnought than a super heavy. Yeah, that said, I suppose you can take three of these in a single Lord of War detachment slot, so uh, I guess you have to take them in that context. Uh, whilst they are counts of Lords of War, they, they, they do seem to lack the rules you would expect from something of that tier, meaning that they can't fall back and still shoot or perform stomp attacks or anything like that. I really think these probably are better thought of as dreadnoughts than a super heavy, uh, irrespective of what the force organisation slot says. Um, as you can see, the model starts with uh, 12 wounds, it's toughness 7, strength 6, and has 4 attacks with a leadership of 8. Uh, has the standard 3 plus armour save uh, on, that you get on most vehicles, and it does have a degrading profile. On the profile, we can see that at full health, the knight starts with 14 inch move, which is pretty tidy, and hits on a 3 plus in uh, shooting or melee. As damage is taken, it degrades to uh, a minimum of 7 inch move with a 5 plus required to hit. In terms of weaponry, we can see that, yeah, good. Uh, it has the option to take a heavy stubber or a melter gun, which are standard items, so you won't worry about their profiles in this review. I would say that my instant reaction, however, is that the only that, the, that this choice really isn't a choice. The heavy stubber means you will uh, suffer the penalty for moving and shooting a heavy weapon. Uh, again, these models don't have the super heavy rules to get around that. Uh, the melt gun is an assault weapon, making it the obvious choice to me, at least, as you'll be hitting for ballistic spell, uh, ballistic skill. Getting my tongue tied there. Um, the Thermal Spear, um, aka the Melter Cannon thingy, uh, has a 30 inch range, uh, an Assault D3 profile, meaning uh, you, you won't be punished for uh, the mobile firing needs and the, the mobile nature of these knights. Uh, it follows the standard Melter profile, strength 8, minus 4 AP, and d6 damage, and if it's within half range, you roll two dice for the damage and discard the lowest, because that's kind of all standard. Uh, I feel with the good mobility that these models will be getting into quite easily firing range turn one, and in almost every circumstance by turn two, you will be uh, making use of the half range bonus. As for Baby's First Chainsword, uh, aka the Reaper Chain Cleaver, uh, it follows the expe expected profile of times two strength, which gives it strength 12 um, over the four attacks, meaning you'll be winning on a two or a three plus with minus three AP and a flat three damage, which is nice uh, compared to a variable amount of damage. The dice gods hate me, so I am always open to like non-variable stats. As for the rest of the data slate, the Armager Warglaive inherits the Ion Shield, 
uh, from its full size counterpart, imbuing a 5 plus in vulnerable save against shooting, which is uh, nice against the LAS, uh, LAS cannon or other high AP firepower that will be levelled against these models to try and uh, uh, stop them uh, getting to getting close enough to bring their melt weaponry to bear. Um, and maybe obvious, uh, being vehicles, these can explode when they die. Uh, the data slate uh, does also cover their uh, force org slot sharing rules. And it says once deployed, the models acts as separate units, which is good because uh, it means if you kill two of a squad of three, for instance, the other one won't bust morale and run away which would be really, really annoying. <laughs> so there you have the contents of the box. A really nice amount of stuff, I feel. Uh, in terms of value, uh, I believe this to be a really good buy, uh, even if you only wanted the, the new knights. Obviously, you can save percentages off the RRP by looking at third-party retailers. But as a baseline, let's work on Games Workshop prices. And based on the uh, contents we can get a definite price for, uh, the total of the Necron stuff, for example, comes to £69.50. I think it's fair to speculate that uh, in line with the cost of other new HQs, Cryptek will will cost another £22.50. So that will bring the total of the Necrons side to £92 if you bought each item in there separately. Add onto that the Mechanicus, uh, the Tech Priest and the Rangers totalling an additional £45.50. I believe... I think it's probably fair to uh, draw a price these not being available separately again, uh, of the new Armigers, uh, as they have the same kind of battlefield role and uh, similar size, uh, a fair comparison would be the new Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought. So I'm going to say they're probably going to retail about £40 each, which would bring the total cost of the Imperial Forces to £85.50. So the combined speculative cost of the box contents will be £177.50. Now the game's actual price tag for this is £95. So that makes uh, the box really uh, highly desirable. Uh, While well, you do only get uh, the kits to build one Armager Warglaive loadout, uh, again, I believe the full retail kit will have uh, two other options as well. I still think the box represents excellent value. If you're not interested in Necron side, you could further offset the cost of buying the Imperial side by selling the Necron parts or vice versa. Although I would say the Imperial side has a higher financial value as uh, the Knights will be in much higher demand as currently this is the only way to get them. Uh, and, you know, newer sets have a higher retail value. In terms of purchasing this box, in honesty, it does come up as somewhat... I'll stay it again, shall I? It does come at somewhat of an inconvenient time for me. Uh, I really don't have the money to drop on this box right now. But I've learned my lesson. Many of these high value, high demand box sets have historically really been pre-order or nothing. The box Set, uh, the, the set with two Imperial Knights, so Imperial Knight Renegade, that's it, uh, seemed to sell out on pre-orders alone, um, as did Shadow War Armageddon, um, as did Gangs of Comora, although that has uh, since been restocked. I would say I could well see this box being extremely limited if it even ever manages to hit retail outlets uh, due to demand outstripping availability. Uh, time will tell, of course, but uh, that's why I bought my copy on pre-order as kind of an IOU to myself, hedging my bets against uh, future availability. Um, as for others, well, if you have a fancy Necron army, keeping an eye on eBay is uh, right now will be a, a great time because I suspect there'll be a glut of people selling off that half of the book, so there'll definitely be some dip deals to be had if you keep an eye out. So let's ask the question. Did you get a copy of uh, Ford Bang yourself? Are you happy with your purchase? Um, will you be playing the Necrons or the Imperial side? Uh, for me, uh, it's an obvious that I'll be playing both. Uh, what did you think of the new Armager models or the new Cryptek model? Uh, 
comment below. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. So that's me done for now. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me ramble on. Um, I hope you enjoyed this content and uh, I welcome your constructive feedback and uh, discussion in the comments below. If you like this video, share it, like it, you know, the usual. Um, if you like the content, uh, subscribe to the channel. It, both uh, liking and subscribing helps me know what's working. In the meantime, I've been Steve. This has been the SDFNet's 40k channel and I will see you next time. The Emperor Protects.